We all liked Zootopia. It was a good movie, and it still is. From kids because of the funny characters and animation, to adults because of the dog themes, teenage furries, no but in all seriousness, this movie is one of my favorite movies and it will always hold a special place in my heart. So you can imagine my surprise when I accidentally stumbled into something called the original story. The tame color story. I thought I was just going to see concepts or ideas of what a story was going to be like, but this story was really well developed. It had concept art of voices. Listen to me. That, that, is, that is not what happens when you take your collar off. Cinematics and even a full animated scene. And for it to be this scrapped story, it was really good. I would see this movie in the theaters 110%. I'm going to tell you the story right now and show you all the scenes. Are you ready? Here we go. Thousands of years ago, the world was a different place. A place where everybody was naked. Those were divided into two groups. Predators with the sharp teeth and prey with the flat teeth. And why weren't we friends? Mmm, Finnick. Cause we wouldn't share clothes. Because predators would eat us. But just to be extra safe, we have the tame collar. When a predator gets agitated, the tame collar reminds him to be good. So now, all mammals can be together. Yes, so in the original plot, animals that were predators had to wear a shock collar. The tame collars were the original story's main thing. It was like what the story was about, these tame collars. Fast forward a couple years, a lot of time, uh, Nick is on the streets doing street things. How are ya? What's GNU? Oh, see what I did? Looking good, madam. Keep it up. Good day to you. Yes, bunnies really do make more bunnies. Oh. Chin up, pal. Okay, big guy. Who's ready for some ice cream? So Nick does the scam, basically the same scam that they do in the movie. He guilt trips the elephant into giving him a big Jumba pop, I think it was called. As soon as they leave the place, Finnick rebuilds himself and... Making me the baby. I'm a grown mammal. Finnick Fox. It is degrading to my entire species. Relax, you're gonna buzz yourself. I am in a diaper! Ah. That was a reoccurring joke in the movie, Predators shocking themselves. Oh, and also really sad, the Dame Color doesn't distinguish between sadness or happiness or excitement or anything, so you cannot get too emotional about anything if you're a Predator or it will shock you, and they describe it in the movie that it hurts a lot. Oh, and in this movie, Zootopia is like a segregated police state. Zootopia was this kind of oppressive police state. If the world is already this broken, what am I rooting for? So how things worked in the city is that if you were a prey, you would get the best everything, the best food, the best housing, the best services. And if you were a predator, you would get the other side of the coin. Because prey are all scared, and they have number predators 10 to 1, so of course. They make all the rules. That's the real ripoff. That one right there is Finnick, and that one right there is Clawhauser. Keep that in mind for later, because these are like Nick's buddies. And to make matters worse, Prey actually treat predators super badly, even refusing services sometimes, because they know they can't do anything about it, because they will get shocked if they get emotional, if they get angry. In this plot, Nick lives in a dirt poured apartment. Well, it's not an apartment, it's just like the basement of some building that he's renting out to live, because in this plot, he's not making any money from the scams that he's doing, unlike the one that came out where he's making a lot of money. Money. There might have been a scene where Nyx is a cockroach under the counter and then the hungry fox almost trashes his entire house trying to get to said cockroach and it's just like to add like a little salt to how poor predators are treated in this universe and how hungry some of them are. Like Anyway, while doing the groceries, Nick's tails gets run over again and he chases the mice and he gets in an accident and I'm pretty sure this is how they introduce Judy Hobbs and she's like writing the notes and she like writes a note to Nick or something like that. But Nick got hurt and here comes a scene that probably some of you have seen already, the clinic scene. This scene is really cool because it is fully animated and some parts are even rendered and it actually has Jason Bateman as Nick. Mr. Wild, I'm your vet, Dr. Arvadillo. I understand you hurt your neck. We're going to have to go ahead and temporarily remove your collar from the checkup. 
Have you ever had enough? Nope, but I got my pants off. And we're all enjoying that. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. Here we go. Oh, okay, all done. Just a cruise. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Can you just give me five more seconds of this? Unfortunately, no. But if I had a dollar every time I heard that... Yeah, you'd be the richest mammal in Zootopia. Oh, crap. He, he got an idea. He's got an amazing idea. Oh, boy. Oh, oh boy. So his idea is to make a park where predators can go and take their colors off. But that costs money so he goes and gets out alone and then we get another scene what does every pred in this town want an escape from everyday life a place where the only rule is to have fun a place for them a place called wild times okay now this is a fun zone amusement park exclusively for zootopia's largest untapped market preds you know they say you can't put a price on happiness and i say you can bang there it is, $19.95 a ticket. I have a building lined up, I have the plans, I have the staff, I have a dream. The only thing I don't have is a loan to make it happen, friend. Will you help me make it happen? Will you help me make it happen? Will you help me make it happen? I'm just going to put it out on the table. You don't like mammals like me, and I do not like mammals like you, but what do we both like? We both like money. You have it, I want to borrow it, and then we'll both make a lot of it. Hmm? <laughs> Desperate? Huh. I'm not desperate. I am desperate. Look, I get it. No one wants to throw money down a rat hole. W and by that, I meant no disrespect. They say you can't put a price on happiness. I say hogwash. What? Well, <laughs> that was an unfortunate... Now, I don't want to beat a dead horse. I'm just going to leave. Over again. It's not that it's a bad idea. It's... Look, there's just too much risk in loaning to... In loaning to mammals without credit. Well, see, the, the thing is, I can't... I can't get credit if you won't loan to me. Right. Absolutely. And we will be happy to loan to you when you do have the credit. Have you tried any of the other banks, Mr. Wilde? And, uh, I call it wild times. I have the plans, I have the staff, and I have a dream. The only thing that I don't have is the loan to make it happen. Will you help me make it happen? So since Nick got on the legal loan and taking your color off in the city is a big crime, he has to come up with a way to get people inside the park without anyone else noticing. 
So he makes a small fake predators only clinic where predators can go in and take their colors off and then enter the park. I think Nick chose a clinic because as we learned before you are allowed to take your color off if it's for medical reasons. So maybe if they find like predators in there without the color Nick can point and say we're a clinic we are allowed to do that. But I think that's just yeah I just think that's why. It's a clinic. Well, Nick is unable to pay Koslob, who is the bear who gave him the money back in time. So Koslob just like drags him in into a conversation. And uh, these are like actual storyboards, so I will put them together the best I can. And I will read it to you the best I can. Hey Koslob, nice to see you. Or should I say... Ice to see you. Oh, okay, look, I'm going to pay you back. I just need a little more time. I give you week, month, year. You will still be small time fox in cheap suit and I still won't have money. Kaslam? I like you, fox. You remind me of me. Without success. But I still break your face! Psh I'm bored. Maurice, Papa is working. Go play with Ipa. What was I? Oh yes. Breaking your face. Breaking. Bre. Bre. Bruh. Bruh. How about ice cream? Whoa! Can we go there? Maybe later, Morris. Ah, but it's cool! Pshhh. He thinks it's cool? <sighs> I am not going to break your face. <coughs> Thanks. But if you don't give me my monies in one week, I stuff you! <gasps> Did you guys think that I should be the next voice of Nick and the audio director of Zootopia 2 which was just announced as I am recording this? I don't know, I think we have a contestant. Someone just dying? What the f Anyway, you should not worry for Nick and if he's gonna get eaten or not because what times is a huge success because every predator wants to have an opportunity to not wear their collar and have the feeling that Nick felt when he took it off for the first time. So you get a montage of all the predators being happy and having lots of fun because they finally allowed to have emotion and release their inner predator and I think that that is a really nice thing and it really brings a tear to the eye really. They also sold merch in the store and they sold this clock with it. Look at this clock. It's so neat. I like how is that Nick is like going around the thingy, like he's like the thingy. I really, I want this clock. Guys, got, look what I, look what I found. Guys, oh, oh my. And Nick became really popular with predators. After all, he's the one who gave him a place to be free and be preds. And it's really heartwarming to see all of them, especially knowing what they're going through. And then you see Nick enjoying himself and then just smiling because he gave his fellow preds a place to be happy and free. But not for long, because here comes the character that some of you might recognize, Judy Hubs. Her job was to investigate a medical clinic that had way too many patients for it to be normal. Judy says that she was sent by the major to investigate why were they so many predators in this predator-only clinic. And Nick kinda like points out the obvious, explains, oh there's so many predators in a predator-only clinic, that's crazy, surely worth a police visit. And Judy's like, I see that, but everyone coming here and decided to come here is just not normal behavior. And then Nick's like, uh, well, I have a degree here if you don't trust me, that this is legit and there's nothing suspicious going on here at all. The degree is false, by the way. Nick manages to get Judy to go away and she just like storms off, but Clawhauser opens the secret door in which predators were getting into wild times, but somehow they still convince her to go away because then she's waiting in the car for an opportunity to go into wild times, so I'm guessing that scene was kinda like a suspense scene. And she ends up finding the park and recording everything, but we don't know if she tells anyone yet because like in the movie, Judy still has her this humanity inside of her, so she might have not told anyone, just keep it a secret, we don't know.
Well, in the meantime, Nick pays off his step to Kozlov, which is a good thing because I thought he was going to get eaten. So everything looks good for Nick, he has a successful business that stands where he stands for, which is Predator should be able to take their colors off, and he is no longer in debt, so that looks like really good, aside from Judy being like the only thorn in the business, but as long as nothing bad happens, everything should be fine. Oh, this next scene. Nick had this habit of looking at the window and seeing his park, but while he was doing so, a mysterious wolf shot him in the neck. The wolf shot Nick with a tranquilizer looking thing, but it had the exact opposite effect that a tranquilizer would. It made Nick go savage. And in this version of the film, the transformation doesn't take something like 10 seconds. It takes a while for Nick to transform, and he looks in a lot of pain in the entire shot. Although it's kind of mysterious, is it not? Why would a wolf do this to a fellow Pred? It wouldn't help him either if they find an insane Pred without its collar on. The mysterious wolf takes his evidence and then just leaves, closing the door behind him. And we don't know what happens between here and then, but what we do know is that by the time Nick breaks out of his room and he's beginning to attack predators, the police also happen to show up that day. So the police is a predator without its color going all freaking insane and biting people and stuff like that. Listen to me. That, that, is, that is not what happens when you take your collar off. Nick's worst nightmare became true and everything is probably now worse and he can't do nothing but watch.